Okay. All right. So welcome to the session. Welcome to the session of University Future Festival. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Andre Dietrich and Sebastian Zug for the session of Remote Labs as OER, the next evolutionary step. So um, have fun. Thanks for the kind introduction. Thank you. Um, very well welcome to our session. Um, in the first part, I, Sebastian Zug, would like to introduce you to our vision. And afterwards, Andrew will explain the ideas, the concepts, problems, and our implementation to cope with these challenges. If we see on the right side a laboratory equipment, this is very common at many universities, it becomes obvious what are the benefits of a remote laboratory installation. Students have the opportunity to access such structures to such learning environments based on their browser activities 24 7. in this way students have the availability of the system and can determine their own pace in learning processes they are independent from office times or other limitations when we go to the next slide we can recognize that this was the starting point of our activities in 2014, 2017, we implemented the remote laboratory implementations for or setups for computer science, um, small robots, microcontrollers um, that were able to receive code from students via web browser and to evaluate the, its correctness and to react on um, the corresponding algorithms. Now it's our perspective and we would like to explain this um, change in our mindset over the years. Now it's our idea to have at the end digital laboratories. So we, we broaden the ideas and just not focus on remote laboratories itself. We broaden the um, effect of our idea on open educational resources. Open educational resources for us um, strong focus during the beginning of 2020 when we started or when we realized that the current implementation of our remote laboratory was very closed so i was not able to adapt the learning processes the descriptions hints supports for our students and we look for opportunities to describe the content separately and of course this means we looked for an description format, like a learning management system that allows to adapt the uh, specific ideas. And for this purpose, we developed LIA script, a text-based representation um, with corresponding metadata, and we discussed about um, the adaptation of the starting markdown uh, layout and transformed and extend the elements of the speech for integrating executable codes, quizzes, all these things that are necessary to present motivating and attractive learning materials. But this is just half of the track. If we switch to the next slide, you can recognize that we later came back to the idea of remote laboratories, but with the context of a broader um, experience. Now we ask what kind of, how can we combine the original remote laboratory idea with additional formats of digital learning, simulations, uh, movies, etc., and merge them in a learning environment that can be reused, that can be adapted. And for this purpose, of course, the idea of open educational resources is perfect. Consequently, it's now our idea in the CrossLab project that is commonly, um, where we commonly work with partners from TU Ilmenau, TU Dortmund and Nord Academy to design concepts for adaptable digital laboratories that can be used um, between different universities, different disciplines and different le lecturers in a way that they, uh, their reusability is increased. Just to summarize the idea, 
to implement such digital laboratories as OER, it's necessary to separate technical aspects and content. And we will now explain how we received this goal in our CrossLab implementation. Thanks for your interest. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you all can hear me. And I will uh, give a slight introduction uh, into the basic ideas, the concepts that we use, and now the technologies. And then, of course, uh, I will shortly describe also or show you how you can create such labs by your own or reuse uh, already existing labs directly by using only browser technologies. So uh, some couple at the starting of the CrossLab project, we came about this another project called Address, which is a, a modular and open a remote teaching platform and it's called also Live LMS. So the ideas that you have like can generate classrooms, which consists uh, of different modules. Every module has a specific uh, task to fulfill. It can be a video chat. You see the live board and some coding editors and stuff like this. So it's pretty easy to extend this approach. So at the beginning, we also worked uh, in this project and helped to like grow uh, address in this case, so is open source. And as I mentioned, the idea is that you have a centralized server. All students connect to a single classroom, uh, which is created also directly within the browser by the teacher and hosted on this service, uh, server. But the great idea about address is that you have can run something like uh, additional browsers or browser tabs and something like uh, that is called station mode. Station mode is just a way to tell the browser that there is some kind of hardware probably attached uh, or there's some service running on the local uh, laptop uh, that, that, that is connected in station mode to this uh, classroom, global classroom, and all the uh, data uh, information flow, everything is mirrored uh, to back to the students and also the teachers. So quite easy, quite impressive. And so how it looks like, just to give you an idea. So you open the browser uh, for your specific laboratory or experiment in this so-called station mode. And as I mentioned, there can be a camera attached to it. There can be an Arduino. There can be a local development server. And everything is served or relayed back to the classroom so that students can access this station and then also access their Arduino start to program this or whatever it is attached to the browser. But what we find, found out actually, it's still pretty complicated to host something like a server. I mean, it's not obvious. Uh, it's not that simple for a normal teacher. And based on our experience from Leo Script, where we also worked or played around with it or integrated some kind of um, peer-to-peer -peer communication via the browser, which allows you to establish classrooms. Uh, so you want to try this out. So here's the opportunity to create something like a classroom. And we re-implemented the entire address system uh, as a browser app that only runs. And everything that you need to create and share a laboratory is just a simple browser, no server installation anymore. So this project can be found on address uh, labs.github.io. I will demo this in a few seconds. Uh, but before I want to show you like the two core technologies that are actually required uh, that you probably have to know if you're going away from this server. So like address was also client server based so that you have this uh, server in the middle that you have to host to which all your students and teachers connect. And we switched to another architecture or to another idea, which is called peer-to-peer -peer in the browser. So there is no central server anymore that hosts this classroom uh, that hosts uh, yeah, as, as a central authority uh, that syncs all those uh, students and members within the classroom and said we have this peer-to-peer -peer network uh, of students. But you might ask yourself, how is this possible uh, to create a simple peer-to-peer uh, -peer net? or probably without a centralized server. So one technology uh, that you, I guess you have already used uh, earlier is like, uh, it's called WebRTC. 
and it's a browser-based uh, web real-time communication protocol, which directly allows uh, two users, probably, or two browsers, to establish a direct connection between them. And this is if you're using, like, uh, MeetGTC, some kind of uh, communication protocol uh, website. In this case, mostly uh, it uses also this web RTC in the background to send you each other the video streams. So it's pretty easy, but it's actually, no, it's not that easy. So I will just demo how you uh, illustrate how you create something like this uh, communication. So that means Alice wants to uh, establish a connection probably to Bob and there has to be like a central it's called signaling server something uh, like a meeting point where both like uh, ls is sending these are my public ips probably you could connect to uh, i'm able to uh, record the video in this in this format uh, and uh, yes and this is sent then to all the other interested peers which directly sent back uh, their information so like um, in my case, I have used can use this video codec and this audio codec, and we can have also a data and communication established. Blah, blah blah. So this has to be done for every user uh, in this case that wants to connect. And if it's done, you have a direct communication. And if this fails because the uh, network is too restrict uh, restricted, then you have to use something like a relay server, uh, which might be expensive. So I added if you want to. Der Ton ist nicht zu hören. Ah, you cannot hear? Uh, okay, so these are two Google engineers discussing about the complexity of WebRTC and why nobody is actually using this. So you can have a look at this uh, probably later. And if you've seen, if there's no central authority, how can you generate some or guarantee that all the peers that send messages to each other have something like a common state or a global state that is equal to all. In this case, there is something like a new technology. It's called uh, conflict-free replicated data types, or CRDTs. And it's basically like mathematically proven methods that allow you that even in a lossy connection where you receive messages a couple of times, uh, you these methods or these data structures guarantee that you, at the end, all will result in the, or will have the same state. So. I just uh, uh, that you have an idea you have like want to implement something like a distributed counter where everyone sends its action i in my case they started or all started with the same uh, starting point but zero this one sense i added like five to it alice received this sense okay i add one to it this message is lost uh, this message is uh, received probably a couple of times so uh, now they have a problem with their state so they cannot sync anymore so all of the members will come up uh, with a different result so there are other solutions i'll leave this out for the moment how you can uh, create this or how you can solve this problem but it might be difficult uh, compared to the tasks that you want to solve i mean in the counter for a counter it's pretty obvious or pretty simple but if you have a collaborative text editor editor in a peer-to-peer -peer system that might be quite difficult so these are the two core technologies that we are using there's web rtc and crdts so and that's basically it of course there are some basic implementations uh, that you can use too and now i will like guide you through the development or th through the creation of a remote lab so you can also do this like visiting this address labs uh, .github.io website so i already created like a previous lab just delete this. Everything that you do is well, that you do is done within the browser. So there is no server. If you create a lab, this is stored within your browser and exchanged to your peers uh, that connect also via this web RTC. So everyone of you is free to create a new laboratory, which creates something like a, a UID. So this is the like in the global chat room, or like, uh, this is the meeting point for all of your. Uh, members, students, uh, whatever. So I'm now here as a teacher, so I have this control of these settings where I can 
So I'm going to create my pool laboratory. Just enable this. You can have some more information. Just save it. You see the change, uh, the content changed. Uh, you can have uh, different members and modules. So, and everything that you do now is probably you can. There's one basic module that you can see. If I share this URL now, for example, I open this within Firefox. Just wait a second. So the same room now just but opened in Firefox, as you see, a new peer appeared. And if they are sending like communications, uh, infrastructure like a subject, my topic, body, some value. You see that messages are exchanged via this peer-to-peer -peer format. Uh, yeah, in this case. So if I create as a teacher, probably new rooms. And my student switched to this room. So as you can see, there's just this module reference. But now this information or messages are not exchanged anymore. So this one sends a couple of messages, but this one does not receive them anymore because they are in separate rooms. So there's just one module, as you can see. There's just less like a reference mo uh, module, which should be shown in actually every room. So there's the idea, if you want to attach like new, you can explore them, the new module, you can explore them on GitHub. For example, like let's search for a couple of, I want to add some additional uh, educational content. And most cases loading, uh, integrating something like a additional module to extend your lab is something like copy just the URL embed this, add this. So this will be shown now also everywhere. You have some design configurations if you want to. You can have student settings, teacher settings, or you can simply uh, like this should be shown into uh, lobby only. And since it's marked down, we can Wait a second, I don't remember the YAML syntax. Welcome to my new lab. So I'll save this. As you can see, a new module has appeared. So we can change or uh, their, their position if we want to. Uh, we can reconfigure them uh, and do a lot of stuff. So these modules are openly, they can even be used for various purposes. How much time is left? Something like uh, you can have a Blockly uh, Arduino uh, configurator, you can have a Lia script module, uh, basic code editor, some video chat, stuff like this. So uh, the integration is pretty easy uh, and simple. And now we come to the OER part. So this is probably my basic lab. So there's no interaction, but I will show you to you how to add this uh, laboratory, uh, how to add this interactive features afterwards. Uh, but now let's say I'm done. I'm happy with my new created laboratory. So, and since this is only a configuration of modules, uh, I can download them. So what you see now, I open this. So it's open two times. So in this case, these are just two modules with their configurations. And this is something that you can also store or host for free on GitHub probably if you are happy with your uh, uh, lab configuration or reuse something like by uploading this again, by restoring the, labor the laboratory that you have created, or you can have a couple of these laboratories actually and uh, host them like an uh, open source project so that others can collaborate and take this as a basis to extend their uh, configuration. And we have already created some basic laboratories that you can use. 
like you can also explore them on GitHub. So probably the easiest way to start with might be something like if you want to share like simply a terminal to let your students like do bash programming. And if you go in here, there's some explanations about uh, this module, how to start this, how to run this. And we've created something like this uh, simple deploy button, where simply if you click onto this, you see the URL has changed. It's just like deploy slash uh, query. It's only link, it's linked to this, actually to a more complex uh, configuration. And this just tells your browser, the web browser that loads this content, just uh, this way, I want to create a new classroom. This is the lab that I want to use. And then you simply, after it's loading, has been loaded. That's it. So we have created a new classroom with some basic configuration. And now I want to probably share my uh, a terminal for my uh, computer in this case. So if you go now to the station mode, as I mentioned in the beginning, to separate the ordinary classroom from the station. So there is this like classroom, there's the global access and station mode just tells the browser to run this, uh, actually uh, to access the local hardware, whatever there is. So there are different opportunities. So if I open this one, as you can see, there's a link, there's a new station has appeared in the classroom. I can switch to this station if I want to. There's some other configuration, some more uh, information about it, but the terminal is not usable at, at this moment. If you are in station mode, so as you can see, I'm the station. Uh, in this case, there's some information of uh, how you probably could run this. Uh, the easiest way, we have added some Docker uh, services which run a local terminal server. Wait a second. Clear. This can be installed on Windows, on Linux, or wherever the, uh, it is. It's just like so. It started the local terminal server, and if everything happens, so this one is now connected. You can have this uh, services that are running in there, and also in this case, and this is just the URL, the classroom URL. You can give this to as much as students as you actually want to. And so this is an easy way, probably, if you want to attach the, or simply give them uh, the access to the shell. If we think further, if we have access to a terminal, probably, why not give them also access to a camera and also to attach something like an Arduino? So, and of course, we have also already created a classroom for this. So I'll leave, switch this at the moment. Um, now I go to the next classroom. So this can be combined with simulations. This can be combined with actually everything. And here's like uh, an Arduino example, uh, which is the same. Um, or simply, if you as a teacher want to create or reuse it, simply click on the deploy button. It is the same load the configuration, the specific configuration, uh, and you can open the classroom. And again, and now, wait a second, I'll shut this down. So in the same case, I simply open a station, which tells, again, the browser uh, that there is now more to it. Wait a second, I'll just need to attach the another camera. I hope this works. And let's try out this Arduino, probably, if I want to share this access. Wait a second, I will reload this since the camera was not attached. So as you see, there is now this specific camera module which only uh, shares the camera information, some more information about the teaching content, and also uh, how to start the server remotely. A terminal server, actually, which has the entire Arduino tool chain on it.
so we are connected uh, this seems to happen something and if I'm you see the station appeared uh, this can be also done if I share this with another browser again let's add, open this classroom in Firefox it tries to connect to the uh, global classroom they exchange the configuration file and then they exchange their state via this uh, CRDTs and if I open the same thing the camera is down below as you can see and if I increase this probably I have now this editor module where I can run flash the code see that uh, something happens so it tries to upload the code there's an error that I will be informed uh, LED high low high low let's close this change the code a bit rerun this again As you see, it's changed, and the LED is actually uh, moving. So this is the basic idea. It's an Arduino. It can be attached to everything, which you can also do uh, if you are more interested. In since uh, uh, basically, probably I've mentioned this, uh, but the browser as a new operating system if you want to have also access just as a last one uh, you can also directly like if there's a serial communication you can add an Arduino or a different uh, uh, how to say um, a different device that is able to talk directly to the browser uh, I'll simply close the station for the moment so close this terminal server this is just the last example uh, where I want to create a new, reuse another classroom. Where is this? Let's call this Arduino View. So the Arduino View was basically developed by a friend of us, uh, Carl Fessler, uh, one of the one of the smartest persons I know, and this allows to actually host also a website on something like an Arduino. So I'll take something more impressive probably. Let's remove uh, this one. I attach another device, and now there's like a control entire experiment that can be hosted on the website that's hosted on this Arduino actually. So, just to uh, show you the demo, uh, it's a basic explanation. In the same way, I'll open quickly the station. So, we have the camera screen sound. So now I can connect to this actually, and this is done. This is only with the browser, no installation, no server actually. This is running, so I can connect uh, to the circuit playground opened, offered by the browser, and everything works. We have now like three experiments. There can be more to it, like we can do like simple temperature measurements. Okay, the temperature is static, or probably pretty static. We can make some noise uh, measurements. I don't know if you can hear this. So like increase the sounds so it's just a demo but it could be anything connected to it or just as another one or last one measuring the lights light intensity so and just manipulate this this can be also shared with others and just like and everything that you need is actually only a browser that's it probably and in the future we hope to have more uh, to see more labs like this and to uh, close the session there's one uh, last uh, like let's say uh, recall or quiz or something uh, what have Poland and Arnold Schwarzenegger in common well they both uh, created like own uh, open textbooks uh, which are hosted for free uh, and can be accessed by different uh, students in their countries for their languages and we've been to the uh, e-learning Africa conference where we have another project which is called Leo script 
uh, which allows actually to create interactive online content and store this uh, on GitHub and to make it publicly available so that others can use, reuse this and share this. And if there's somebody interested in, uh, from you in learning how to create educational content with LeoScript, so basically this presentation is also made with LeoScript, and uh, wants to help us to translate this educational content from these uh, different platforms, then we're happy to connect with you and uh, for what, as I mentioned, for translating this OER content. Here's some basic information. You can have a look at our YouTube channel. Uh, so we are happy to connect with you, whether you want to create something like an open lab or if you want to help us to create, translate these uh, interactive educational contents into something simply text-based like uh, a simple markdown di uh, diagram. So thank you very much. So I think we can close the record or shut down the recording. All right.